Hi there, it's Professor Eric Steinhardt, and let's talk about some of the medical aspects of cannabis use. So cannabis has a long history of medical use, uh, going back thousands of years. It was known in the ancient world for treating headaches, for treating various kinds of pains. Um, it was a standard part of the apothecaries of past centuries, right? Their, their pharmacies. And so cannabis is generally used as a treatment for disease. It's, I don't know of any disease that cannabis cures, right? For instance, um, ibuprofen can um, help treat the pain of a toothache, but it's not going to cure your toothache. Antibiotics, on the other hand, can cure an infection. That means they bring it to an end. So cannabis is generally a treatment for various diseases, and that means it's usually taken on a regular or chronic chronic basis. In other words, if you have multiple sclerosis and you're using cannabis to treat the pain, you're going to take it regularly, right, um, as a treatment of an underlying condition that it does not cure, right, but it treats the symptoms and generally does not cure the disease. So there are lots of diseases that cannabis is um, recommended for or used for as a treatment, right? And um, for instance, those diseases or conditions are often codified um, in state laws on medical uses. There are many uh, American states that have medical use laws for cannabis, and those medical use laws will um, lay out or outline the types of conditions or diseases for which cannabis can be used as a treatment. So they might say that uh, it's permissible to use cannabis as a treatment for epilepsy, but they won't say that it's permissible to use cannabis as a cure for broken bones. They might say it's permissible to use cannabis as a treatment for cancer pain, but not as a treatment or cure for the cancer itself. So those state laws lay out explicit conditions for which a doctor can recommend cannabis to a patient according to the state um, cannabis use laws. It's important to note a little legal hiccup here, which is that generally um, doctors can't prescribe cannabis because prescription is a legal act that's regulated in the United States by various federal laws and cannabis is federally illegal. Of course, what I just said could change at any time, so we've got to always stay tuned to the current state of play in the law. When um, states decide on um, permitting cannabis as a treatment for a certain condition or disease, they want to base their decisions on evidence. And anytime anybody thinks that cannabis is good for treating some disease or illness, right, that claim has to be made on the basis of evidence. If you look on websites that uh, promote cannabis use, you often find lots of uh, misinformation, medical misinformation, inaccuracies, and wrong information. Oh, cannabis is great for X, whatever X is. And then they'll cite some study, and study often doesn't have much to do with the claim. So there's a lot of, um, you know, uh, quackery out there. In other words, pseudo-medicine, false medicine, and false advertising for what cannabis can do. Um, so we have to be really careful about that. And certainly as uh, for thinking about cannabis philosophically, we want to think about truth and the ways that cannabis can be used um, in truthfully. So if I make a claim that cannabis treats migraines, is my claim true? Is it backed up by evidence? And the best kind of evidence comes from randomized um, controlled trials, right, which are conducted with um, placebos or other kinds of treatment arms that you can really assess whether the cannabis is doing uh, what it says it's doing or what people say it's doing. So you can find lots of uh, good studies on cannabis in reputable um, repositories of medical articles such as PubMed, uh, which is, uh, contains all the medical articles published in the United States. Um, also, Cochrane is an organization that does medical reviews, and um, you can look for some Cochrane reviews of cannabis.
So let's think that cannabis is, um, let's consider the case where cannabis is recommended for some condition. Somebody has, let's say, um, joint pain and they live in a state where it's legal for a doctor to recommend using cannabis for uh, the treatment of joint pain. What happens next? Well, usually doctors, when they prescribe drugs, and I'm using the term prescribe in a, you know, a general way here, not in a legal sense, but when they recommend or prescribe drugs, they don't just say, go take a drug, see what happens right? A lot of things have to happen first. One of the things is that, you know, the doctor has to see if you have any pre-existing conditions that might um, make the drug not suitable for you. For instance, if you have high blood pressure or some cardiac condition, well, cannabis can raise blood pressure, so maybe it's not, it's not medically safe for you to take cannabis for your joint pain. In other words, there are conditions of safety that have to be addressed. Um, or perhaps a woman is pregnant and the effects of cannabis on pregnancy are really poorly understood. And so it would be unethical for a doctor to prescribe or recommend cannabis to a woman who's pregnant or uh, nursing a baby. Likewise, um, you might want to consider, uh, you know, the contraindications or pre-existing conditions in the elderly. For instance, elderly people are much more vulnerable to falls. Falls can break their bones and do bad things to them and injure them in many ways. And elderly people often have um, poor balance. So cannabis can make you, um, can decrease your ability to maintain your balance. And for a, for a young, healthy individual, it's not a big deal, right? It doesn't, it doesn't decrement their balance enough to cause them to fall. But for an elderly person, even a small decrease in balance, your ability of the brain to maintain your balance, even a small decrease could place you at great risk for having a very damaging injury or fall. And so um, things like that need to be taken into consideration. Um, and that's what doctors do. If a doctor decides it's safe to recommend cannabis, then doctors don't usually just say, smoke a bunch of weed. No, that's unethical. A doctor has to say something like, take one milligram of THC in the morning and at bedtime to treat your pain. Doctors have to have exact dosage strategies, exact dosing algorithms, and exact ways of scheduling doses. And so um, these, this is known generally as titration, right, which is the process of deciding what the correct dosage is and how often one should take that dosage. General rule is start low and go slow. Start with a small dose of cannabis increment it by small doses until you get the desired medical effect. And generally, again, it's not cannabis that's being used here. A doctor doesn't just say, take some cannabis. Cannabis contains dozens, even hundreds of medically active molecules. And so a doctor might say, take one milligram of THC and three milligrams of CBD in an oil or in an edible or something like that. In other words, precision of dosing is essential. Another point here is that the effects of cannabis smoke or vapor on the lungs are not clearly understood and may be detrimental. So a doctor isn't going to recommend, or it's not going to be ethical to recommend in most cases, that you should smoke cannabis medically. Perhaps there are cases such as extreme cannabis pain or some forms of epilepsy where an immediate high dose of THC uh, and other molecules is necessary. That's for a doctor to decide. So maybe there are some cases where smoking could be appropriate. But again, the general health considerations of smoking have to be considered. Another point, finally, with medical uses is there has to be monitoring and consideration of adverse effects or safety issues. Yeah, cannabis, you know, helped me with my joint pain, but it made me tend to fall over. Well, okay. Or it made me have short-term memory loss or dysfunction, and that's not good. 
So a person using cannabis has to always be sensitive, if they're using cannabis medically, has to be sensitive to the adverse events and safety issues and discuss them with their doctors. In other words, all of this, as we think about the cannabis industry or if we think about websites and things that promote cannabis, using cannabis medically requires lots of careful scientific and ethical decisions to be made. It's not ethical to tell somebody, oh, hey, just smoke a bunch of, you got joint pain? Yeah, you get, smoke a bunch of weed, it'll help you out. No, that's just ethically wrong. So medical uses of cannabis are restricted by all sorts of considerations of truth and goodness.